Hi folks, we are going to work on some Chapter 8 Momentum and Impulse Problems, and here goes. A constant friction force of 25 newtons acts on a 65 kilogram snowboarder for 20 seconds. What is her change in velocity? So, as always, write down what we know. So we have a force of 25 newtons that is acting on a mass of 65 kilograms for a time of 20 seconds. We want to know what is the change in velocity. There are a couple different ways to go about this problem, but if you see it, the momentum impulse theorem is very, very handy at this point in time. So mass change in velocity is force change in time, and the change in velocity then is going to be the impulse force applied over time divided by mass so the change in velocity will be that 25 newtons force applied for 20 seconds of time divided by a mass of 65 kilograms and the change in velocity then will be and I'm going to grab my calculator 25 times 20 divided by 65 and I end up with down to three sig figs, 7.69 meters per second will be the change in velocity on the snowboarder, which is kind of a nice, simple, little problem. Um, if you're curious where the units come from, let's take a moment and do that. A newton times a second divided by a kilogram. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared with another second on top and a kilogram down below. So when we go through this, this kilogram cancels that one, this second cancels one of those, we end up with a meter on top, a second on the bottom, and meters per second. Next problem. A 0.145 kilogram baseball is pitched at 39 meters per second, is hit on a horizontal line drive straight back towards the pitcher at 52 meters per second. If the contact time between the ball and the bat is 0 .003 seconds, what is the average force between the ball and the bat? And the caution, remember momentum and velocity are vectors. So let's kind of take a moment and draw what's going on. So we have a baseball with a mass of 0 0.145 kilograms, and it is pitched at an original velocity of 39 meters per second. It hits the bat, uh, that's my weird and crazy picture of a bat, that's not a good picture of a bat, um, and it comes back at 52 meters per second. The contact time is 0 0.003, now the first two zeros are just placeholders, the last two actually are sig fig, significant digits. So that is the contact time, and that's quite realistic. These things happen very, very quickly. So what actually is the change in velocity? We want to, we are going to have to use that in order to find the force applied. This is a beautiful example of where momentum impulse theorem would be handy. So mass change in velocity is going to be force times the time over which that force applied. So force is going to be mass change in velocity divided by time. The mass here is going to be the 0 0.145 kilograms. Now let's take a look at that change in velocity. Because we had a change in direction, um, my change in velocity is going to be my original velocity minus my final velocity. That's going to be my change in velocity. But because there is a change in direction, it is going to be 39 meters per second minus a negative 52. So my original velocity is 39 meters per second minus a negative 52 meters per second minus to get the difference between the two negative to indicate there was a change in direction. It takes a lot of force not only to stop the ball but to reverse its direction. So this is a, a big a big sign thing that you have to pay attention to right there and all of this occurs in 0.00300 seconds. So when I calculate this out, let's take a moment and do this, 
I'm going to have 0.145 times, and I'm just going to take the 0.145 divided by the 0 0.003 to begin with. So th this side is 0 0.000435 kilograms per second times this change in velocity, because I want to make a big deal out of this. This change in velocity over here is going to be a 91 meters per second. So 91 meters per second change in velocity times 0 0.000. 4, 3, 5. I expect you're going to do all of this in one fell swoop on your calculator, but when I do this, I end up with, um, I think, a really, really wrong answer. So I'm going to do the math again. The 91 makes me happy. All of this is going to end up being 91 meters per second. I'm going to do the math again because I think Mary did something wrong. 0 0.0145 times 91 divided by that time 0.003 and I ended up, there we go, because I ended up with a weird crazy answer, 43.98 newtons and to get this to three sig figs that's going to end up being 4400 newtons. Now where the heck does a newton come from here? I have on the top a kilogram, meter per second over second. So I've got a kilogram, next to it a meter, second is down in the basement, that second goes down below, and there is also another second down below, and a newton is a kilogram meter second times itself squared is one newton. So that works out very, very nicely. All right, let's do one more of these. Number 10, a volleyball is spiked so that it has an incoming velocity, it has a velocity going this way, of 4 meters per second. It changes to an outgoing velocity, very similar to the last problem, of 21 meters per second. If the mass of the ball is 0 0.0350 kilograms, I want to know what impulse is applied to the ball. What is the impulse? Well, that momentum impulse theorem, remember the change in momentum is mass times change in velocity is force times change in time equals the change in impulse. That whole thing is the momentum impulse theorem and any part of it is equal to any other. Well, this time we are given information about velocity and we're given information about mass, which indicates I'm going to use this piece, and I'm asked to find impulse, so I'm going to use that piece. So I'm going to set those two pieces equal to each other, so the change in impulse is going to be equal to the mass times the change in velocity, so the change in impulse will be the mass of point three five zero kilograms times the change in velocity which is the original velocity minus the final so this is going to be my four meters per second minus and because the velocity changed directions minus 21 meters per second so 4 minus a minus 21, all of this is going to be 25. So 25 times 0.35, the impulse applied is 8.75. And let's take a look at the units. Kilograms times meters over seconds, and more commonly uh, impulse units are given as Newton seconds, which are odd little beasties, and they are usually said as Newton seconds because impulse is force times time, hence a force unit, Newton, time unit, second. So where the heck does this, this crazy thing come from? Well, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, times another second, and this second cancels one of those, and kilogram meters per second is a newton second, which is an impulse unit. I know, the units can get crazy. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.